A manhunt is still underway for a Texas man accused of killing five people, including an eight-year-old boy, after one of them, his neighbors, asked him to stop shooting rounds in his front yard. Police say there are currently no leads and they have no idea where he is. 38-year-old Francisco Oropesa is accused of using an AR-15 rifle to hunt, shoot, and kill five of his neighbors' execution style at about 11.30 p.m. on Friday night after they made the noise complaint. The victims have been identified as Sonia Guzman, 25 years old, Diana Alvarado, 21, Julissa Rivera, 31, Jose Casares, 18, and Daniel Lasso, eight years old. According to ABC News, two of the women were discovered in the home, lying on top of two surviving children, saving their lives. Fox's Bill Malugan reports that Oropesa is in the United States illegally, has been previously deported multiple times with multiple illegal reentries on his record and was last encountered by ICE in 2016. Texas Governor Greg Abbott was accused of insensitivity after referring to the shooting victims as illegal immigrants in a tweet about the tragedy, a claim which has been disputed by surviving family members. Uh, this was a very... Uh, it, it was a truly insensitive statement from the governor, uh, and I don't. It doesn't even make a lot of tactical sense because if we want to do the whole like, what is our political agenda thing? You know, Democrats want to blame guns, Republicans want to you know direct the blame toward illegal immigrants. Um, it, the killer, it sounds like, is confirmed to be a very illegal immigrant. So it, 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 I don't know why you would like admonish the victims in, in that way. You could just redirect, say, this is you know why we have to crack down on immigration harder or something like that. Uh, anyway, just a horribly just abominable situation. Um, Kind of in the vein of a couple crime stories we've discussed on the show recently, which I don't know that they reflect any actual trend, but they were all stories that became national news about, um, you know, the, the kid who uh, rang the doorbell of the wrong house, the person that turned around in the driveway, the, the, the cheerleader who tried to get in the wrong car, uh, of people um, not for any reason that merits a real confrontation being um, viciously attacked and in, in some cases uh, killed. Um, just, just horrible. An absolutely horrific situation. And horrific in light of the recent news, all of the recent killings that we've had in the United States that have people talking about guns again. And it can be convenient to stick to this narrative of this terrible thing happened and the person used an AR-15. And to have a conversation about banning guns when any of these things happens, I get it. People want to talk about the policy when it's on their mind. We've had countries like Australia buy guns back at market price. That is something that the United States government could do. But with the amount of arms in the United States, it would take years for all of those guns to be off of the streets. And I am certain that people who are mentally unstable or who really like their guns and are likely to use them are not gonna be the first ones to sell their guns back. Like, what is the plan if that's really your policy solution? It's not a tangible one. It's not gonna address this violence in a meaningful way. Yeah, and I mean, obviously, like, this person is not, I mean, his first is not even supposed to be in the country, so it, he's not supposed to carry an AR-15 in the United States because he's not supposed to be in the United States. Um, and there was, you know, there was law enforcement action obviously taken to deport him multiple times. So, you know, I always say, you know, I'm a supporter of the Second Amendment. Um, I don't really support uh, increased gun control, but if we we have some gun laws on the books before anyone wants to introduce like a new plan to disarm people there's already pl like if you're a felon you're not supposed to be carrying a gun we don't we're not we're not prosecuting enforcing the illegal gun possessions that we already have so i'm very um i'm very opposed to any new like if there's no i don't want to get to a place and it often seems like proponents of gun control want to get to this place where more aggressive gun control measures are only being enforced against law-abiding citizens who are not going to misuse the guns they have anyway. There are people who shouldn't have guns, like people who are already criminals for other reasons. They have guns, and a, a lot of the, the, the misdeeds, the abuse of firearms, is in that population of people who already, I mean, and then the, the kind of liberal or progressive side of this, you know, there's a reluctance to support more criminalization, you know, in the kind of criminal justice reform sense, which I often end up agreeing with progressives on some criminal justice reform stuff, but 
you know, if you want like stronger action against guns, you're going to have to arrest people for having them. And there's a, a unwillingness to do that that I perceive from the Democratic side anyway. Yeah, I don't know that I would necessarily like want to see that? Like, is that a good use of law enforcement's mm -hmm. time when resources and efforts could be invested into addressing some of the root problems? Like, we had to completely reassess how we interpret crimes when we went from, okay, murders happen because there is motive means an opportunity. Likely there's some kind of personal relationship. They could make some money off of it. There's a, there was a reason people we saw would kill other people. And then we saw the rise of serial killers, mm -hmm. where it was people that maybe they had never met before in their entire lives. And there's some psychological ill uh, that causes them to do that. And I think it's an entirely different thing, these kinds of killings, where it seems to be an anger at society at large. And to have that much animosity towards your neighbors, I think, means we need to address the degradation of our communities and the lack of public resources people have if we want to meaningfully address problems like this. Well, and I would again point to um, COVID for that, for the total collapse of social support systems, the alienation that so many people confined to their homes felt. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think that's very meaningful. A lot, not not this crime, but a lot of um, a lot of crimes in cities uh, are the increased carjackings in D.C., for instance. Here uh, is largely attributable, as far as I can understand, to um, to teenagers with with less with who are not you know who are at the margins and now and then no longer had school and extracurricular activities and things of that nature or, or community support systems and uh, fall into um, a, a bad way. And this stuff is also a reminder always that even the mainstream media, I think, obsesses over crimes and, and murders that uh, can be discernibly tied to political hate or ideology. You know, we're mm -hmm. always hearing about hate crimes, and uh, I mean, especially now we're hearing how the right is so hateful and making everything worse, and you know, the Trump effect and all that stuff. When the overwhelming majority of murders, and this is like cold comfort, but have nothing to do with like a political agenda. It's, it's neighbors killing neighbors, it's domestic abuse, it's workplace violence. And we should address those things, but we're not, you know, we're not, we gotta turn the temperature down. And, but it's not really, it's not, it's not one party's fault or something like that. Right, it seems like they wanna talk about situations like this, as if it's it's not in the context of larger systems that they have any role in whatsoever. Like it's very difficult to say, mm, maybe COVID was a, a bad time for a lot of people in the United States. Many people were very isolated. Some people were working from home, keeping in touch with their friends via Zoom. There were clear class divisions with how COVID impacted people. If you're not tech savvy, if you don't have the equipment necessary to join Zoom calls, you have to pay for Wi-Fi, and maybe you're out of a job because of the pandemic's impact on the economy. There are so many reasons why I think uh, in 10 or so years we'll see what's going on in society now and, and point to a lot of it as, okay, that might have some roots in the isolation during COVID. And then how it feels to be a worker and to be told you're so essential to our economy and then we're actually going to send you off to work without no PPE because we want to get our lattes uh, when we go out for our daily walk and go back to work from home. So I think all of those dynamics are definitely at play when something like this happens. Should again mention that this suspect is still at large, which is uh, pretty remarkable. It sounds like they had him confined to a certain area and then he eluded the, yeah. the barrier they set up. Uh, so the FBI still looking for him, and he could very well still be armed and dangerous, even though you know, they found the gun that he used, he could have additional weapons. So a scary situation down there, uh, more rising right after this.